Hi, Jerry Tashwa here once again with Mallet Tip number nine. This time we're going to talk about maintenance. Obviously, as I said in an earlier tip, the vibraphone and marimba, very mechanical instruments. Sitting on a frame, bars, resonators enhancing the sound. Uh, on the vibraphone, you have a motor and a mechanism and a pedal, which introduces obviously more complexities uh, that we have to deal with. So let's take a look at the instrument and figure out what we need to do to make our instrument recording ready. As in the other tip, I talked about grease fittings, essentially. Uh, there are spots that we need to deal with, and that's these hinge joints. Keep them lubricated, usually a Vaseline type product. Underneath where the dampener rod connects to the dampener bar itself, there's a little hook. Put some Vaseline in there as well. Keep it lubricated, prevent it from squeaking. On the pedal, the pedal mechanism, there's little hinges and little pins and little uh, connectors and things like that. There's a little screw, which I'll show you in this, this video right here. Uh, that need to be oiled and you can't actually get Vaseline into them But sometimes a nice uh, Penetrating oil or a nice WD-40 or something else like that will prevent that from happening um, The propellers the pulsators the tremolo effect I Don't use it that often, but however when I use it, I would like it to be quiet. So everywhere where the actual um, shaft goes through a, a device, a little metal connector or a nylon bushing or something. Each one of those areas, you need to put a drop of oil on to make sure that as they're turning, uh, it's, there's something to keep it lubricated and doesn't make noise and squeak. These are all the, all the issues that go on, especially when you're recording. You'll notice real quickly where the problems are. The frame itself, if you don't if you transport your instrument without collapsing it, in other words, you stick it in your van, at least take the bars off of it. The bars have a lot of weight. So if you take the bars off and put them in a case and put your, your vibraphone frame then in your van, you won't have a top heavy instrument that tends to rattle like that. And when it does that, it usually it, it, everything becomes loose and, and all the, uh, the, uh, the side mechanisms and the hinges and stuff start rattling. So these are things you have to deal with. The best way is to probably tear your instrument apart and put it in the proper cases. Uh, I have some fiber cases that I use a lot, and I've actually flown with the fiber cases. When I fly with them, I will actually um, reinforce um, the instrument itself with a lot of extra foam padding. I'll put it all around the instrument and on the top and on the bottom to help, just in case something bangs up against the fiber cases, because the fiber is not that thick and it's not really gonna prevent something from banging too hard on it. If you fly a lot with your instrument, you may have to invest in some of the uh, industrial strength flight cases, which are A, expensive, and B, very, very heavy. And being that our instrument is heavy to begin with, this is something that you're gonna have to really be conscious of. Uh, and you may not be able to fly commercial, you might have to send your instrument uh, a different way. Um, so that's something that you have to make sure it's in your budget. A lot of times I'll, I'll make sure that I have maybe at least a frame uh, available to me and I can always carry my bars uh, with me to a, say a European performance or something like that. But back on the maintenance issue, the bars. The bars, obviously the crucial part of the instrument, the part that has got the pitch, the part that has been tuned. We have to be very sensitive to not scratching it, not banging it up against something. If you take a little chunk out of the aluminum, you're basically changing the pitch of the bar. So these are things that we have to avoid. Um, these posts here that hold the bars, if you're going through a door and you bump it, chances are you're going to bend that post. And when you bend the post, then it's up against a bar and preventing that bar from properly floating and ringing. So you have to make sure, take a pair of pliers and straighten these posts out so they're you know, perfectly up and down and they're not leaning one way or another against another bar. Um, other things, the dampener uh, pad itself, I use a pad that's made by a, a Vanderplast, Nico Vanderplast in Holland, and this is a gel pad, and I use the gel pads because they just dampen a lot better. They're very uniform, they adapt to the bars, but if you're using a felt, you're probably gonna notice after a couple years, especially the softer felt, which is the preferred felt to use, that it'll actually have grooves in it where 
the, the bars are sitting in. Uh, so sometimes you have to actually sort of fluff them up a little bit to make sure that they're not compressed so much they're, they're not properly dampening. The instruments, again, have a lot of issues uh, to try to make a very good quiet performance. It, it's kind of hard with a mechanical instrument like this. Uh, but we need to obviously, as a recording artist, do whatever we can do to make our recording as quiet as possible. And these are some of the, the tips that I can offer you. So I, I do wish you the very best with this. Uh, and keep playing and listen to some more tips. We'll have one more, tip number 10 here, shortly. Thank you.